Hello, friends. Yeah, many clueless viewers go nuts when they see what I'm doing with the guitars. They leave very interesting comments like, dude, you ruined your guitar, what are you doing? But they should watch these episodes to the end to understand why I do this and how I do it. Today the fun part begins. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then click the subscribe button, ring the bell or follow the link in the description to my Patreon account, where I post tutorial videos on all technological processes, materials that I use, my go-to secrets with detailed descriptions and commentary. Thanks to my Patreon subscribers, I have the opportunity to put together these videos, make them better and better, and do high-quality translations for them. Now, let's relic the greenie. Let's go! Well, here's the guitar after three months of sunbathing. It faded quite well. The red color almost disappeared, but bright and warm shades are still visible. This color will fade more and will disappear. So don't pay attention to it right now. To start the relicking process, I need to take it apart. Have a look how the red color looks now and how it looked at the very beginning. You can see those red shades under the parts that cover them. I like it a lot actually. The first cycle of cryo process is done. Cracks appeared in the right direction, just as I expected. Everything looks great, taking into account that, that the nitro is rather thin. This time I covered the instrument with the thinnest coat I could do. So, my friends, let's start another step of relicking Les Paul Greeny. This guitar has been sunbathing for more than two months, but the sun is not shining every day here and some days the guitar was resting in the case, so the red color is still noticeable and the overall look is warm. But this color will fade and it will look more like my working Les Paul, that was finished using the same... You can see there is no laker at all at this place. As I have a small shade left under the frame, like here, but more faded, however I can still see it. So I'll navigate by it. If one looks from another angle like this, one can see that there is one two millimeter of laker near the frame. I'll also leave a bit here. Here you can notice some specific greeny cracks. I'll try to copy them as well. Anyway, cracks here lay by the side of milling. The wood seems to cave in and the laker cracks right in this place. If you have a look at the tone block and its milling, you see it has an irregular shape and the lacquer cracked right above it. I will use a scalpel to copy cracks in this place and then I will apply some paint there. Cracks will be visible. Possibly real cracks might follow artificial ones on the laker. Well, what else? You see there's a lot of dings here, a great amount of them. All these dots are dings on the nitro. Interesting fact is that pickup frames also have scratches, dings and chips. I will recreate it as well.
This detail is quite interesting. I like it. Also, I'll try to copy this wear on the tailpiece. It's almost ready. I even have two tailpieces. But the thing is that they're still not covered with nickel. I have materials to do it. I think I'll use this one. Cover it with nickel above aluminium. I believe it will get a precise effect. Because all modern cloth and tail pieces do not fit in shape, in color, and they always have an intermediate copper layer. That's why to recreate such a worn place in nickel, it's impossible with the glossin part, because nickel will be worn up to red copper. And if I continue to wear it through the copper, the red edges will still be visible. So, let's go. Nice and slow. Now I will take off the laker in these places. Okay, this one is done. Now I will work with these small places. Okay, now I will try to make cracks right here. This work requires concentration. I hope not to flinch. I don't really like to draw the cracks, as I get a not-so-realistic picture. One can see that it's artificial. In this... In this particular place, cracks are quite deep and dark, so I hope to get the same effect here. Okay, seems like I succeeded. It looks quite smooth and at the right places. This place is usually covered with marks from the pick. That's why I need to make lots of chips and dings. Okay, I think the top is ready. 
Now I'll start with the back. The whole outline on this side, almost the whole outline, is without the laker. I will copy that. The laker simply falls down. Now, I need to highlight the wood pores here. They're usually warm on the original instruments, and the wood looks vintage when pores are kind of melted. So, pores are now open, and I need to sand it a bit, to make it softer. And I'll make more scratches. I think that's enough at least. I'll repeat it further. The more cycles of this technique, the more realistic the result becomes.
Now I start to prepare a compound for relicking celluloid inlays. Here it is. Seems I managed to do it. Now it needs to dry and become stronger. And then I will continue relicking. And now I'm going to do my main profession. Painting. And the last cycle of Creo procedures. Some more cracks appeared, right as I planned. They started from chips and dings. That's all. The wood became shiny. Now I will wipe this white dirt. Everything is like on the original guitar. Like this one was used for ages and self-polished. The Laker relic is done. Mm -hmm.